everyone, it's Sherry from the blog, OurLifeHomeschooling.com, where I share homeschooling encouragement for everyday moms. I'm gonna be talking today about how to prepare for homeschooling high school. So this video is for those of you who have a child in middle school and you see that high school is coming and you're wondering how you can get ready for it and if this is something that is a fit for your family. Yeah, R.O.E. Well, the road the boat. Oh, that's If you're new to the channel, my name is Sherry. I am a homeschooling mom to 10 kids. Our oldest is graduating this year, and this is our youngest, Benjamin. He's going to be joining me right here. This is where he's happiest. I'm married to my high school sweetheart, Nelson. We've been married for 22 years. I'm a former public school teacher turned homeschool mom. I love encouraging other moms on my YouTube channel and on the blog, ourlifehomeschooling.com. Recently, I've had several questions on YouTube asking um, specifics about how we homeschool high school. So uh, I thought I'd do a video on this. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of exactly how we you know, do all the parts of homeschooling high school. Maybe I'll save that for a future video and blog post, but I did want to give just um, some tips now that we have one graduating. I wanted to talk about how you can prepare for homeschooling in the high school years. So again, this is for those of you who have kids that are in middle school, you're thinking about continuing with homeschool into the high school years, and you want to know how you can get ready for it. Several years ago, when our kids were in middle school, uh, we had some moms come to our co-op and just talk to us about how to prepare for high school. They talked about what it looks like and um, some opportunities that we had in our area and how it was working for their families. This time that we got to talk with those moms was so valuable to me. They actually gave us some handouts. Um, I kept notes. I still have those notes to this day and I refer to them often. Um, it's really helped us get through the high school years. So I'm going to be sharing some of the things that they shared with me as well as some of the things that we've learned in our years homeschooling. If you are just thinking about the idea of continuing with homeschooling, um, it might, you know, maybe you're not sure what you're gonna do or what it's gonna look like. I know I felt that way. I was so happy with the lifestyle we had had so far and I wanted to be able to continue it, but I just didn't know exactly how it would look or if it was going to work for us. I wanted my kids to have good friends. I wanted them to have opportunities to be involved in different things. Um, so I, I just wasn't sure. And maybe that's where you are at this point. I think it's really helpful to look at the benefits. I think the biggest one is that they are still able to really follow their interests. In high school, the shift uh, really changes from just learning the basics of reading, writing, and math and um, getting a general knowledge of history and science, to them starting to think about what they would like to study and what they're going to be doing after they graduate. So it's important for them to be able to experiment with different things. Maybe follow someone around, someone who does a certain trade, and just observing what they're doing, working with them, just seeing if this is something that they'd like to do. When you homeschool, you have a lot more free time on your hands, so that is also time for you to take different classes, to try different things. 
um, to do big projects, you know, if there's things that your kids are interested in. So I think specifically because high school is a time when the change is shifting and we want them to start thinking about their futures, homeschooling has a huge advantage in this area. One of the most important things as kids change from young children into adolescents and then adults is that they have really good friends. And um, our years homeschooling when they were young, we were involved in a co-op. They were involved in a lot of things, but our co-op friends we were just so close with. They developed a lot of really tight friendships. And as they've grown into teens, these friendships are still really strong. Because our kids have maintained um, a lot of the friendships that they had when they were younger, um, we're still involved in these friends' lives and their families. You know, they come over our house, they go over their house, and um, a lot of times, you know, once they start driving, uh, our son was able to go out for coffee, meet his friends for coffee in the middle of the day, and, you know, they would just work on some of their schoolwork at the coffee shop. It was so nice. And... Um, these are really close friendships. They're friendships that aren't marred by all that peer pressure, negative peer pressure that comes so early. I think a lot of the things that kids are exposed to in high school and middle school has been delayed for our homeschooled kids. And um, if you wanna call that sheltered, you can call that sheltered, but I think it's a really good thing. They have great friendships. They have friends from many different avenues, um, not just homeschool friends, but they've just been able to have an innocent childhood a little bit longer. Another benefit for homeschooling high school, speaking personally for moms, is finishing what you started. High school really is the icing on the cake. The early years are the hard part where you put in so much work, but in high school, it's much more hands-off. The kids are taking the initiative and honing in to develop their interests and skills. Though you may have to be more creative or resourceful in high school, there is so much reward in seeing it through to the end. Remember, just because you are homeschooling doesn't mean you have to teach everything. You can outsource a lot of subjects, especially in these years. So I'll just share a little bit about what homeschooling has looked like for us in the upper grades. Um, since the kids were very young, we've been involved in a co-op that meets twice a month. And this is a co-op that was started just by a group of families. And we just started meeting together in each other's homes. This grew into a co-op that became pretty big and um, is still a co-op that we attend today. And uh, they, they've grown up with these kids. It's really uh, just a warm and welcoming place. So in high school, they still attend this co-op that's twice a month. Additionally, they go to a second co-op, which is once a week. This is a drop-off co-op that has high school teachers, paid high school teachers. So it is a little bit more of a cost for us for them to attend this um, co-op. But for me, especially with having such a wide range of kids, it's given me a little bit of leeway um, in being able to outsource a couple of subjects. So they don't get all their subjects from the second co-op, um, but they get especially science and math. Those are things that at this stage I would really rather outsource. I've done some of the English credits, history credits, and then a lot of electives we've done here at home. In our area, we also have a group called Chalk. It's um, an organization that exists. It was started by parents. It exists to give the homeschooled kids in our area a nice graduating year. So if you participate in Chalk for your senior year, um, you meet friends from you know lots of different co-ops, some that maybe haven't even been a part of a co-op, and you have socials every month, you have a formal or a prom, um, you plan out your whole graduation, that's what you spend your year doing. You have senior pictures, uh, invitations to your graduation, the graduation is a pretty big event at the end of the year, and it's just really nice for them to finish their high school in this way and to really celebrate what they've done. So um, maybe you don't have something like that in your area, but I just wanted to share that with you so you have an idea of what it can look like or what it does look like. And as I said before, um, if you don't have some of these things in your area, I would challenge you to start it. 
get it going, reach out to people, make connections. That's exactly how our co-op started you know, over 13 years ago. So let me just give a couple tips here um, that are just some of the things that those moms shared with me all those years ago and things that I've learned. The first one is um, to find out the laws in your state. So you can become familiar with these even right now. Um, so just start looking up the actual law. Some states are tighter than others. We live in Pennsylvania, so this is um, one of the hardest states to homeschool, but I, having said that, I don't really think it's all that hard. But some states have certain requirements for what subjects are taught, others don't. So you really want to get to know, you know the laws in your state. And I think a great way, one of the best ways to find out you know, how to do this really is just to find another homeschool mom or a homeschool parent. Ask her what she did. So you want to ask things like, um, are there certain subjects that are required? What would my child do that would count as a credit? Um, what opportunities are there? What co-ops? What curriculum did you use? What did you outsource? These are the kinds of questions that you want to ask another homeschool mom in your area that has homeschooled through high school. A second thing is to start thinking about the areas of study that some of the electives and some of the classes that you want your child to take. So once you find out if there are requirements, if there are certain things that you know should be taught according to your state laws, um, those are kind of a given. But in high school, you start to think about what do we want to pass down to our kids? By the time my child graduates, what things do I want to feel like I have taught them or passed on to them? So talk with your spouse. This is a great time to just think about, you know, for us, one of those was money management. We want them to understand personal finance. Um, maybe it's worldview. You want them to have some classes on worldview or small business. Give them some experience. Um, starting a business. Th this is going to look really different in every family because every family is different and has different priorities and every child is different and they're going to have different interests. Another thing you want to do is talk to your child. What are they interested in? What do they see themselves doing in the future? And at the beginning of high school, I remember people saying this to me, what does your child want to do? What do they spend all their time doing? And I didn't feel like my child had any particular interest and they kind of start out that way but as you go through the years they you begin to see things that they're not interested in for sure I saw those things and things that they just start spending all their time doing um, our oldest son who's graduating once he got his license and he bought his own car he just I mean he would just spend hours out there on his car fixing it up, um, putting a new sound system in. He did things to his car I I don't have the vocabulary to, I don't know that much about, so I can't really you know tell you intelligently. So he is very interested right now in automotive mechanics and he's looking at that as a future after he graduates. So just start to ask your child what they're interested in and watch them, watch what they ask about, watch what gets them excited. And these are gonna be maybe some opportunities for them that they wanna pursue. This is a great time to make a rough transcript. This is something I didn't do. Um, and I, I felt at the beginning of high school, even after I had had these moms share this with me, I kind of felt paralyzed. I just didn't know what to do. It all seemed so much bigger and um, I just didn't know where to start. What I should have done and I, what I plan to do with the rest of our kids is just to write a rough transcript. So the first thing I would write in would be the classes that are required for them. And then um, that leaves space to put in some variables of things that we would like for him or for them to learn and um, some open spaces for them to pick things that they're interested in. This just helps get you started and get you on the right track. A third tip that I would give is to make one portfolio for high school. This, I'm sharing this with you also because it's another mistake that I made. Um, we all learn from our mistakes. Like my friend Jen says, your first child is like the first pancake off the griddle. You know, you did your best, um, but you learned so much and the rest of them, you kind of have a better idea of how to do things. I, in elementary school, I kept pretty good portfolios of each of the years for each of the kids. They were simple. It wasn't, you know, um, it wasn't anything that was elaborate or anything, but 
every year they had a nice portfolio and I would put things in like some of the pamphlets from plays and museums and field trips and stuff and their artwork and it just was really pretty because when they're young they do all these cute projects. As they get into high school, the things that you save would be like algebra homework or um, or sometimes they're just things that you can't save. You know, my son took a graphic design class, so all of his work is on the computer. It's not something that you can put in a portfolio. Now you would think that in high school you would keep better records of the kids' work than you did in elementary school, but I did the opposite. So you really should keep a portfolio. Keep a couple samples of work for each credit that you want to count on their transcript. Um, so don't make that same mistake that I did. And I also would put it all in one portfolio because in high school you start to think of things as one big project. You don't have to necessarily complete a credit within ninth grade. You know, you may start something and not finish it, but you'll finish it up in 10th grade. So you're not thinking as much in terms of ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. You are thinking of it as one big project and you want to keep a couple samples of work for every credit on your transcript. That's why I think it's helpful to have one portfolio for high school. A fourth thing that I would share is to change your thinking. Change your thinking as far as academics and as far as your relationship. When my kids were young and we were you know, in the elementary years of homeschooling, I was really focused on the academics. I wanted to make sure they were reading on level, I didn't want them to be behind. I spent a lot of time thinking about curriculum and picking something that worked for us, worrying over math. This really changed once they hit middle and high school because I started to see the countdown and that my time with them was short. And I started caring less and less about the academics and more and more about our relationship. Not that the academics wasn't important, um, obviously, I still focused on it, but I started realizing that they're leaving our home. He's leaving, and um, I only have this short time with him. I really want to enjoy homeschooling with him. I want to enjoy our time. I want our home to be a place that he wants to come back to. Different things became important to us. Things like having their friends over, having fun family movie nights, um, making our home just a place that's warm and fun. So from the beginning of middle school up through high school, we shifted, the shift changed from focusing on academics to focusing more on relationships. Another thing that was different that we had to really change our thinking about was in elementary school, you are doing a bulk of the work. We homeschool moms are teaching them to read and um, it, sometimes all of that stuff at the beginning seems so overwhelming and you're just buried in it for such a long period of time. But as they grow up, they're more and more independent. And especially when they get into high school, they're doing so much on their own that it can sometimes feel like you're not homeschooling anymore because they get up, they get started on their stuff, and you know, you're know you really much more of an advisor or a counselor, answering their questions, helping them when they're making decisions, talking through the pros and cons, and um, this becomes their education. They're, they're making the decisions now. A last tip that I would share is that you as a mom keep close connections with your other friends that are homeschooling moms. Um, in the beginning, I did this naturally just out of necessity. If we were gonna homeschool, I had to know some other parents who were doing this. We had to meet other families and we just developed really close connections with them because we needed each other. As our kids grew and those things happened on their own, we didn't make quite as much an effort. When our son started high school, that was the COVID year. So that kind of threw things for a loop even more. You felt even more disconnected. And um, by the time he was in 11th and 12th grade, I realized that you know those close friendships can drift apart um, even more in high school because first of all, your kids are going all different places. So you're running around a lot more. 
And whenever you are with some of your friends, usually your kids are around and they're old enough to hear conversations and understand things. And you know, some of the things that maybe you used to share with your mom friends when the kids were little and nobody, none of the kids understood what you were talking about, you could really open up and talk about struggles. You can't do that anymore when your kids get older because they're always there and you just can't talk as freely about those things. But as a mom, you still need the support of friends and you still need to be able to talk about the hard things and how other people are doing and how, you know, how did you get through this or what did you do about that? Those things are still really important. So don't let go of those close friendships that you've made over time with those homeschool moms because in the high school years, you need them more than ever. I hope this has answered some questions that some of you have had. Maybe at some point I will try and do a video more specifically on what we do in high school. If you head on over to the blog, I also did a post on this. So you can find just links to some of the things that I shared in here. Thanks for listening in. Have a great day.